My name is Bruno Duarte from Fresh Floral Creations in Toronto, Ontario. Today I'm going to be demonstrating uh, a table centerpiece um, and I'm going to actually create a container for the centerpiece. Um, so I'm going to start by showing you how I create it. Um, basically what I, use, uh, what I do is I use um, these uh, plastic coated wires, which I actually get with orchids. And so what I'm going to do is basically, actually I learned this technique from Hitomi last year when I was in Hawaii. So I have started implementing it in most of my designs when I do my structures, um, especially with these wires. So basically what you do is you take a U-glue dot to the end of it, and then you wrap, start wrapping paper covered wire around it. And then you get your drill and you just insert it into the drill and then you basically And then you just add another U-glue dot to the end. And you just continue with your wire till the very end. And then you just cut it off. And the reason why I like wrapping this, the, uh, the wire with the paper cover wire is because we're gonna be binding it, so therefore all these grooves will hold the wires in, in place, so therefore your uh, structure won't be sliding anywhere. So I find that it really works really well for stability. So basically I'm gonna, you get two pieces of wire that are exactly identical, it's the same, same height. Same height. Um, and then before I start that, um, we're going to be binding it with uh, wire that has been uh, with corsage tape. So, and I actually, because we're gonna be using quite a bit of wire, I like to extend my wires. So I'm gonna do two wires in one. So basically base, just kind of wrapping it into itself. So you kind of cover the whole wire. And the reason why I use the um, corsage tape is because it's uh, waxy. So therefore holds the structure. Uh, it's an extra stability for, for the structure. So basically I kind of go to almost the end and then I add, basically add another wire on top. And then you just keep going, keep wrapping it. So now you have double the length. All the way to the end. So then what you're gonna do is basically leave them a, a, a little bit apart. Actually I'm gonna do it over here. Um, and then basically I'm gonna grab my reeds. I usually do five. Uh, I've also done it with three. I do five because it will give me a little bit more coverage. Um, so then what you do, you take your extended wires and you basically find where they both meet and then I kind of just bend it in half. So, like so. And then you grab another one. And you just bend it. So then you basically kind of Attach it. I leave. I always leave a little bit of wire exposed because um, that's where you're going to bind it with uh, with the other side because you're going to bend it into each into each other. So you kind of just do that. I did a twist on each, and I try to keep the length the, the same same distance with the wire. So there we are. So then, when you have your, your wires, you start with your reeds. Usually I'll just kind of give myself a little bit of a gap on the, uh, at the base. And then you just kind of Starting is always the, the, the most difficult because you have to get the spacing. So you do it one twist. And then you want to make sure you put your wire. So give it a bit of space. Do the one twist. So the trick here is now you have to go underneath the wire, 
nice and tight, come back around. And then you grab five more. So you just keep repeating this until you kind of fill up your wire. But the main thing is, as you'll see, is making sure that you kind of line up your reeds so that they, um, they're the same length at the base. Because ideally what we're gonna do is gonna kind of put it down. So I'm gonna have to cut this, keep it straight. So you're gonna kind of, and then kind of bend to create the container. So the ideal thing is to kind of create the whole lining of the, um, the reeds so they're in a row without the wires kind of, because what happened with, the, with these two wires, they'll either expand out too much, so then you always have to keep an eye making sure that the gap doesn't widen too much. And then you always have to go around. And I always, I, after I do one bind, I always go on, in behind, so it really keeps it sturdy, so it doesn't really slide. And I would imagine that this, you can do this technique, it doesn't have to be with the reeds. I think any, any sort of um, branch that's really straight, I believe, I, I, I haven't tried it yet, but I, would, I wouldn't, uh, I would imagine that it would be not, it would definitely, this technique will work for any, any for that sort of, um, with any, any straight branch uh, to create a container and give it, give it a really organic feel. So you can see the wires are starting to widen, so you kind of push them in a little bit, just so that it keep, keeps it uh, in line. And I, I really like this, um, this technique with when you kind of doing an arrangement because it really does showcase the flowers really nicely um, because there's hardly anything else around it and kind of it really does showcase the blooms beautifully. see we're almost uh, running out of wire so I'm going to just show you how to uh, add the, the other wire once you've finished your wires. And then I just kind of twist because I don't think I'll have enough to come back around. So I just will basically come around and make sure that it's nice and tight and just twist several times and just cut off the excess wire. And then you grab another one of your long wires, find the center, bend it. And what I usually do is I use the, um, this wire to kind of hold, so I kind of clip, clip it behind the, and then just kind of keep it in place. I didn't do a twist this time. I did a twist in the beginning just to keep the wire in place because you're just starting off. Now that you have already wires, it's a little easier to, um, to kind of uh, continue. So I'll just kind of finish this bunch of reeds here.
this, uh, this uh, technique is a little bit time consuming, but the great thing about the, using something that is, is already dry, not fresh, is you can reuse it over and over, especially if you're doing like a wedding work. Um, it, will take a it does take a little bit of time, but especially if the client is just renting the container, you can always get, get, get it back and reuse it again. And so once you get to, you just basically keep going until there we are. And then, so you just keep going until the end and you kind of, as you can see, I kept on, the yeah, main thing is trying to keep it straight. Um, let me just throw this here for now. So you want to keep it straight along when you're, when you're binding. As you can see, my wire ended there, there, and there. So, but you don't see that from the front. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to attach two of these together. And um, the reason why I keep a little bit of the excess wire is just so that when we attach I've done these where you can attach, make a container with just one, but I'm going to create it with two. And basically what I would do is intertwine the two panels together and then use a smaller black wire. Make sure they're nice and tight. And The great thing is because you do have a lot of little gaps uh, with the binding, so you can always put a wire through, which is great because we are, we are going to be using um, test tubes in this in this design to, as your water source. So it's a great you can. There's a lot of ways to attach to this um, structure. And just one more. And now we're going to um, join them together. By intertwining them like that. And basically doing the exact same thing on this side as I did uh, on the previous side, and just making sure that two wires are bound together so it doesn't slide on you or come undone. So now we have, so now we can kind of, because the wires are nice and sturdy. And one of the things that might happen sometimes, because you do try your best to line up all the things, if it doesn't line up, you basically kind of go in and just cut so you have a very flat surface. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to add our water source, which is going to be test tubes. So basically what I'm going to do is just take this, these test tubes, take my black covered wire with the um, wax, wax tape, twist it, and then you kind of go in through the container and you kind of squeeze. And then I will just add a second wire so that the test tube is not going to be moving around too much when you add your flowers and keeps your flowers in place. And do that again. 
And the wire that I use is 22 gauge that I, that I, I, that I use. It's not too thin and it's also not too, um, so it's not too thick to, to twist. So it makes it, uh, it is quite easy to work with and not so hard on your hands because after a while when you've been doing all this wiring, your fingertips start to hurt. So once you've um, now added all your uh, test tubes for your water source, let me just show you. So that's how many test tubes I've put inside. So, um, so now I'm going to make it even tighter so you can be a long, narrow um, centerpiece. And now I'm basically what I'm going to do is just fill the test tubes with water and then start adding our gorgeous flowers. So all the test tubes are filled with water. So I'm going to start with just adding grass. The trick is always trying to find the test tubes. <laughs> now let's add some of these gorgeous alocasia. Okay, now we're going to add some Ethereum. Then we're going to add some of these Coronopsis miniature. And as you can see, probably the, the stems are not going to be touching the, the, the test tubes. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use an extra long water pick. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the back test tubes to actually hold Okay. Now we're going to add some more Ethereum.
And now we're going to add some dahlias to this. And then also for this kind of design, I'm trying to find thinner stems because of course I have only so much space in these test tubes. Another thing you could do is just if you is just insert it into the water pick. One more. Now I'm going to just add some of these into that, but I'm just going to use Water pick is too long. Cut it off. Sure, some of this purple is coming through. And voila! Yep. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a bouquet for you. Um, and I am actually gonna create my structure of my bouquet with uh, Bo Derek hair. Um, basically, I'm gonna, basically this is the stem, I kind of just cut them all off and uh, created circles with them. So basically you just kind of do a full circle around create a full circle. Then you add, I'm gonna use waxed, uh, olive green uh, wax tape wire, 22 gauge. And I'm just going to uh, bind it twice on each strand. So basically you kind of cut off all the hairs and then create, and then create circles, pile them all up together. And then you basically start attaching them together. So I'll just do that right now, just to kind of show you. And once again, I'm also doing two binds so that it is a sturdy, um, structure. So then once you have all, all, all your uh, circles created and attached together, you start to basically then create your form, how you want your shape of the, the bouquet. And I've done a little bit of work beforehand. And so basically this is, I'm gonna create a cascading bouquet. And basically, so that's all the circles connected together. And now I'm just going to um, 
I'm gonna leave these here. I'm gonna probably add them at the end. I'm gonna start with adding some of the flowers to it. So as you can see, I'm gonna start with the dahlias. Actually, I think I'm gonna add some of these purple anthurium. And now, let's go with And I love these fiddleheads. Now I'm just going to, I'm actually gonna tie it together with just so that it stays in place. Now I'm going to add some of these wavy, just to hold, just give me a, like a collar around the, the, the bouquet. And actually kind of push the bulgaric structure, give it extra support. Now I want to bring the hot pink Philanopsis down. I'm just going to actually cut my bouquet. And now I'm going to actually bring this to hold the bouquet while I add, just wire it onto here. So now what I'm gonna do is just, I'm going to just add some, uh, I'm gonna bring in the, the Philanopsis all the way down. 
uh, by just gluing it onto the Boderic hair. So I'm gonna use some of the floral adhesive, the Oasis. I don't want to take away, I don't want to use too many so that it just it takes away from the, the actual structure of the bouquet. Voila. This is my cascading bouquet uh, created with uh, a tropical nouveau uh, style with um, Boderic hair, uh, dahlias, uh, philonopsis, and various other flowers and anthurium. Uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. I hope you all enjoyed.